Hi, I'm Heather Dawson. Every week on our show, we bring you the best of California. So let's start off with a tour of headlines that made news around the state. Orange County, finally some good news about air quality. Air pollution has taken a sharp drop in Orange County and the rest of the Los Angeles basin over the past two decades. Lung irritants, ground level ozone and fine particle pollution have dropped down 35% since 1990. San Diego, so do you want to take your family on an African safari but don't have the cash? Well, the world famous San Diego Zoo's Wild Animal Park is the next best thing. The park is now expanding its services to offer zip lines and overnight camping. Los Angeles, a new airline for pets only has been started by two dog owners. Using pressurized cargo planes, Pet Airways will ship a critter inside its container for $149 between five cities. Los Angeles, Chicago, Denver, New York, and Washington. San Francisco, Mayor Gavin Newsom signed an ordinance for one of the largest municipal solar projects in the nation, boosting San Francisco's image as a center of support for green technology. Now the project will mount 25,000 solar panels in the city, providing up to five megawatts of renewable power for the city to transmit into its electrical grid. Moving on to our spotlight segment this week, we shine the light on Monterey, not only one of the most scenic getaways on California's coastline, but steeped in history as well. California Life's Tom Jordan took a California road trip to the central coast town where he found a quaint boutique hotel to match the beautiful surroundings. Here's Tom. The Central Coast sports one of the most magnificent views on California's roadways. The winding Highway 1, hundreds of feet above the Pacific Ocean, is the gateway to Monterey. Our California road trip brings us to the Hotel Pacific in the heart of Monterey's downtown. With the downtown location, it's great. We um, have nice romantic rooms that couples enjoy, but they're also very spacious, so we have rooms with two beds that families can also be very comfortable in. The authentic Spanish-style adobe hotel offers lush private gardens, balcony and patio rooms, down feather bedding, fireplaces, complimentary continental breakfast, and afternoon refreshments. Hotel Pacific, perfect for both business and leisure. Conveniently located just steps away from the Monterey Conference Center, but it also has its own business amenities. So we do work with a lot of business travelers and have meeting space for up to about 40 people, so we do some small corporate groups as well. But our trip is based on pleasure, and lucky us is just a few minutes from the Monterey Bay Aquarium and other top area attractions. Fisherman's Wharf is about two blocks away. We've got a lot of great shops, restaurants, local Monterey seafood. There's also a trolley stop right on the corner of the hotel that'll take you into Cannery Row, which is about a half mile away. It turns out Hotel Pacific was the perfect choice for our getaway to the Monterey Bay area. Monterey was California's first capital. There's a walkway in front of the hotel. On one side, we've got California's first theater. And on the other side of the hotel, there's the Casa Sobranes, which is open um, periodically for tours inside the home and outside the garden areas. Whether you're of the business clientele or here for fun and relaxation, Hotel Pacific and the Monterey Bay Area may be just the stop for your next California road trip. In Monterey, I'm Tom Jordan. Wine lovers from across California gathered in Ghirardelli Square to uncork their mind to the world of wine. Monique Sultani brings us the best in California from San Francisco. We're here at the Uncorked Festival in Ghirardelli Square. On a hot day, white definitely tastes better than red. It's definitely a good way to bring friends together, get everyone outside, and try some great wines. I am joined by Elise Williams. She's of Waddle Creek Winery. The Waddle Creek is 100% estate grown. It is family owned. So my, my parents uh, started Waddle Creek 16 years ago. We have 600 acres in Mendocino County, and it's all made in Alexander Valley, where we do have some other, other uh, varietals there. And we live on the property. So San Francisco Tasting Room in Ghirardelli Square is one of the locations that you will find us at. And that's where we're sitting right here, uh, which is really neat to be able to have a tasting room right here in the heart of the city. Absolutely. It's wonderful. So we get a great local crowd that comes in, really supports us. We love it. What are we drinking here? So this is the 2007 Viognier from our Alexander Valley property. And this is a very small production, only about 500 cases. And that's great because the tasting room sees 
a lot of our small production. And for anyone who's not familiar with a Viognier, what is it? It's a white grape, it's in a warmer climate, so you're going to get a little bit of apricot, a little bit of light oak. Um, it's very, very nice summer wine. Let's do a little cheers, shall we, Elise? What are we cheersing to? Uncorked and to Waddle Creek. Cheers, Waddle Creek! Bringing you the best in California, I'm Morning Sultan. Ghirardelli Square was registered as a historic landmark in 1982 and has since become one of San Francisco's most treasured icons. If you'd like to stop by the square, they host a series of events all year round. And coming up, he's the Emmy-winning comedy writer and producer behind hits like Murphy Brown and Mad About You. And he's here to tell us all about his new book, which of course is set right here in California. He's our in-studio profile. I'm Audra Stafford here aboard the Disney Magic where Tangled the Musical just had its premiere. Coming up, I'll show you some of the incredible talent on deck. The Patio Restaurants in San Diego, where you'll always find fresh seasonal food with a distinct local flavor. Toast to the coast at the Patio on Lamont in Pacific Beach. Enjoy beefed up ballpark favorites at the Patio in Left Field at Petco Park. Try the top-notch collection of tequila at the Patio on Goldfinch in Mission Hills. And fire up your taste buds at Fireside by the Patio at Liberty Station. Make your reservation now at thepatiosd.com. Founded by Jacques Lubin and his partners in 1990, Ink Plan USA has helped thousands of entrepreneurs to form legal entities throughout the world. Our clients have also made productive use of the various services that we offer, initial company registrations, bank consulting, virtual office services, and more. Ink Plan's clientele continues to grow primarily from customer referrals. We are affiliated with Corporate Holding Services, a highly respected Delaware firm that advises large U.S. and international corporations. This is a health warning from Dr. Approved Medical, America's trusted resource for back braces. If you're 65 or older and suffering from back pain, call now to see if you qualify for our advanced pain-relieving back brace at little or no cost to you. Many people are now using the pain-relieving back brace as an alternative to surgery or harmful medications and experience back pain relief that they haven't felt in years. Don't let your back pain turn into something worse. Get the back brace designed specifically to reduce your back pain now at little or no cost to you. Our friendly team of experts will handle all the paperwork and deliver it free right to your door. The pain relieving back brace may be covered by Medicare at little or no cost to you. Call our hotline now and get free shipping and our complimentary pain relieving gel. Call 800-506-4910. 800-506-4910, 800-506-4910. I'm Audra Stafford here aboard the Disney Magic where Tangled the Musical has just set sail. I have dreams like you, no really, just much less touchy-feely. Five years after it hit the big screen, the hair-raising tale of Rapunzel and Flynn Rider is hitting the high seas in a new musical for Disney Cruise Line. The show features three new songs by the movie's legendary composer Alan Menken and lyricist Glenn Slater. And more than a hundred costumes designed by San Diego native Paloma um, Young. It's really nice to meet you. Young won a Tony Award for her work on Peter and the Starcatcher. For this show, she drew inspiration from Rapunzel herself, whom she calls the Pinterest princess. She has all these skills that she's developed on her own. She bakes, she sews, she paints. So we look at the costumes and we're like, does she do embroidery? Does she do block printing? She makes all her own clothes. Young says making all the clothes for this show was a big job. So we have these thugs, we have royals, we have guards, we have horses. And so we have all these crazy characters. Young and her team also had some pretty crazy working conditions. I usually have a work room and we have a fitting room where we fit the actors and they don't have that on a cruise ship because <laughs> they don't have that space. Instead, they took over a couple of guest cabins, pulled out the mattresses and put the beds up against the wall. Put a couple sewing machines in and we have a little rack with the clothes and we just have very tight little fittings. Upstage the- Set designer Bradley screen. Kay also so had to work within some here. tight quarters. We have three large shows of this scale happening at the same time. Because we are limited in space, we make great use of video projection throughout the show. 
And so behind the scenery, like in the town sequence, the beautiful palace on the hill, that's on video. And if you look closely during the scene at the Snuggly Duckling, you might notice a few personal touches. Some of the um, production staff, their names are written, the German version of it, written in the barrels and the piano and things like that. And on that very same board, a sweet princess was born. And all of those set pieces are designed to stay put, even on the roughest seas. Everything is locked up, locked down. We want to keep the illusion that we're in a solid theater. That just happens to be swaying back and forth every night. That swaying is an added challenge for the actors, especially puppeteer David Colston Chorus, who plays Maximus. Tell me a little bit about this incredible puppet. Uh, well, the eyes uh, operate with my right thumb. It's going to come down to make the scowl. It's going to go up to make more a surprised face there. If I need him to sniff, for instance, I might put him on the longer strap. The bungee will go down a little bit farther so that I can get closer to the ground to sniff it out. Can you catch his trail? The shorter strap helps me in some of the longer scenes to brace and support. He's about 14 pounds, I'd say. And David says he's thrilled to finally introduce him to audiences. You get that, that response, that, oh, ooh, or, or even applause, and, and you're like, oh, he's alive. Three little girls behind me are all dressed up as Rapunzel, and they're crying. It's great to see it come together. Bringing you the best of entertainment, I'm Audra Stafford for California Life. Welcome back. Big news from Beverly Hills. Celebrity plastic surgeon Dr. Andrew Orden has discovered an anti-aging breakthrough called Fill and Freeze, and he's giving away one million bottles free. I spent nearly 30 years looking for an effective instant breakthrough to reduce the appearance of wrinkles that can be applied topically instead of with surgery or invasive medical techniques. And I finally found it with Derm Exclusive's Fill and Freeze. Wow, I'm young again. I don't feel like an old lady. The lines are gone. Oh my God, wow. I can't believe it. It looks really good. It gives you a whole new confidence. It definitely took 10 years off. If I went to a dermatologist here in the city, I would pay three, $400 for this. I know you're wondering what Derm Exclusive can do for you. Well, you don't have to wonder. You can order it right now and try it for yourself absolutely risk-free. And here's how. Call now during this special direct-to-consumer offer and you won't pay $120. Today, you can get your own instant results with Fill and Freeze for only $59. But that's not all. Today, we're taking another $20 off, so now you can get this instant wrinkle-removing miracle for the low price of only $39.95. And as part of our 1 million bottle giveaway, Dr. Orden is including a second $60 bottle of Fill and Freeze free. That's nearly $120 of Fill and Freeze for only $39.95. Dr. Orden will even include his micro-peel resurfacing pads, intensive repair serum, and collagen lift moisturizer, a $200 value, free. Order now and we'll even upgrade your order to express delivery. That's a $15 value, free. Plus, you even get to try it risk-free for 30 days with our money-back guarantee. But you must call to order. Call 1-800-619-1871. That's 1-800-619-1871. Order now. Welcome back to California Life. Joining me today is a Hollywood insider who's written for hit comedies like Mad About You, The Drew Carey Show, and Murphy Brown, which earned him an Emmy and a Golden Globe for his work. He's now translating his writing talents from the small screen to the written word, and his debut novel is getting rave reviews. Today's California Life profile is Russ Woody. Thank you so much for being with us, Russ. Hi. And let's just get right into this, because I'm sure the viewers are wondering. <laughs> First of all, your book is called The Wheel of Noel Doyd. Noel Doyd. And I, I don't know, I'd like to make a comparison of maybe The Hobbit a little yeah. bit and seeing this. Okay. So explain a little bit about the book and this character. Right <laughs> the, uh, the book is about a uh, spherical city at the center of the Earth that's inhabited by little creatures like this, Noel Doyds. And they operate the machinery uh, that is responsible for the rotation of the Earth. And this story is about uh, one particular instance where they have to come up from the center of the Earth to San Francisco to retrieve a crystal from Golden Gate Park, which absorbs sunlight and uh, will eventually fuel the machinery. Uh, but they're usually about a foot and a half to two feet tall. Uh, they're chubby, and they're unlike Tolkien's hobbits. They look a little like hobbits. Yeah, in fact, a Tolkien bit. got the idea from, he had been to Noldoid in the uh, late 1800s when he was a young boy. 
Um, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, but uh, the, but they're, the main difference is they are very uh, grouchy, disagreeable, uh, argumentative creatures. Now, you obviously base this a lot in California. Is that because you're a native or? Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it takes you through different parts of California, which I, I find interesting. There's a, there's a fabulous high-speed chase from uh, San Francisco to uh, Fresno. Which only happens in California. Yes. I think, you know, LA News is kind of the only news that I see a car chase almost weekly. So. Yeah. We have some, <laughs> of, the, we have some of the best uh, car chases, I think, in the, in the country, if not the world. Now, how did you go from writing, you know, hit TV shows to writing a novel, a fiction novel? Well, I always said when I was working on shows that I wanted to, to work on uh, something that, uh, a production that never actually went into production. So when you're doing a television show, for instance, you're there for a month and a half, two months with just the writers. And it's a really, uh, it's a cocoon, and there is very little outside uh, interference. And then at the end of the summer, the uh, actors and the crew come in, and then everything gets messed up. <laughs> Uh, if you've ever worked with actors, you know you know what I mean. Oh, they're horrible, horrible people. But uh, uh, so this is uh, you know this is going off and spending a couple years uh, living in this little world. Now, obviously, were you a fan of The Hobbit and those you know kinds of stories growing up? Or I, you know, I I read them when I was in college, I think, and I really I love the book. I'm not a I'm not a sci-fi. Mm -hmm. Or fantasy person, because you know those those people are fanatics about it. Um, oh yes, yeah, they are. And <laughs> now you know my little nephew is is into a lot of those stories, and you know I see this kind of could be a trilogy or maybe something that goes on to the big screen. I mean, do you have those hopes? I mean, I know the book just came out, but is that's that interesting something? you say that. Uh, my uh, and we haven't rehearsed this. <laughs> uh, uh, but my uh, ten-year-old son, when he was t uh, my youngest son, who when he was mm -hmm. ten, he read the manuscript for it and he and he gave me notes, um, which is a delightful experience ben. for any <laughs> of the writers out there. Who, who, uh, uh, but then he pitched me a sequel uh, to this, and you know he was ten, so I kind of like well, I thought, well, this is not going to be any good. Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking about it, and, I, and it made absolute sense. It, it is the story that has to come next. So. If this has uh, any success, I'll, I'll go on and I'll do that. What, what, is there a message that kids will get from the book? I mean, obviously it's a great tale and, you know, talks about all the characters and they're going to get into that, but is there a message you think kids will take away from the book? Uh, for kids, I, I just hope it's a great adventure. Mm -hmm. um, for adults who, um, some of them I think would enjoy it, uh, there is a lot of underlying uh, uh, politics, uh, uh, some of my own prejudices about uh, politics in this country in particular, and uh, there's stuff about religion, and there's, uh, uh, it has to do a great deal with reincarnation and, and life and death. The Noldoids uh, reincarnate with memory, so okay. death to them is not a, a big deal. Uh, when someone they love or they are associated with dies, they're not they're a little inconvenienced, mm -hmm. and particularly if the deceased owed the money, they're ticked off about it. And headstones, in fact, in Noldoy to have the amount of money owed to uh, certain people. So is there a little karma involved? You know, if they're good, then when they get reincarnated, or...? Well, there is. Uh, the, it goes into a whole thing about their whole system of reincarnation. In fact, mm -hmm. it becomes a, a, a big part of the story as you get into Noldoid. There are three humans who end up in Noldoid. Well, obviously, a fascinating book, The Wheel of Noldoid. And I know you said you can get it on Amazon.com. I wish you all the best of Thank luck. You. And hopefully we see it on the big screen. Oh, I would be OK. I would, yeah, I wouldn't object. <laughs> Thank you so much for being our California profile. The Peterson Automotive Museum is completely brand new from the inside to the outside. Following a $90 million renovation, that lasted 13 months. Now, let's go inside. A special grand opening ceremony was held on December 3rd, just a few days after the 2015 LA Auto Show closed for the season. One of the first cars you'll see upon entering the museum is this 1900 Smith. 
built right here in Los Angeles. Okay. I understand you have 25 new galleries here? We have 25 new galleries at the Peterson Automotive Museum. They're spread over three floors. Uh, most visitors will start their tour on the third floor and work their way down. The third floor is a history floor. We talk about uh, history chronologically, of course, but we do break it out into five, uh, five different themes. Um, we want uh, people to understand Los Angeles as well as the rest of the world uh, in five different areas. For example, innovation, um, styling, uh, that sort of thing, uh, how, how, how these things differ from from Los Angeles versus the rest of the world. Los Angeles may consider styling one way, the rest of the world maybe considers it another way. So we want to discuss those kinds of things. And also you cannot have a car museum in Los Angeles and not talk about Hollywood. So you've got a, we've got a, a very good collection of, of Hollywood cars, um, all of which will rotate over time. Um, we want to keep things interesting enough so that people will want to keep coming back. Okay, very good. Now I heard there's even a satellite studio for the Arts Center College of Design here. Uh, third floor uh, is history, second floor is industry. When people get down to the second floor, they'll learn all about the people behind the car, the, the gigantic companies um, that make these vehicles, how they're made, uh, the technology behind them, and also the styling behind them. And part of that styling is a, is a, um, a, a tribute a, a, to the Arts Center College of Design, which is in nearby Pasadena. Uh, the Art Center um, graduates more people who have an influence on the world automotive industry than any other institution in, on the planet. And we're lucky that they're very, very close to us and, and that's a story that we want to communicate. We want to communicate that this school is right in our backyard. And they come to the Peterson Automotive Museum, they've set up a, a kind of a satellite campus so that their students can be uh, close to a, a potential source of inspiration. Now I know the little ones are going to be excited to see the Cars Mechanical Institute based on the Cars movie. Um, kids and, and really adults can go in there and learn so much about an automobile that, that they maybe thought they understood but, but didn't really. This helps lock it into place. You can learn how a car runs, why a car does what it does, the, the mechanics behind um, the operation of a vehicle. Now let's discuss the alternative energy vehicles. You got the electric cars. Do you have any fuel cells? Mm -hmm. um, we also have an alternative power gallery, and we have four cars that are featured right now. We have the world's first compressed natural gas vehicle, 1939 Fiat, from that we got from Italy. We have a very, very early gas electric hybrid built during the teens up in Canada. We have uh, an early. A uh, battery electric car, the Detroit Electric, built in 1915, our example. And we have the world's first fuel cell electric vehicle, the 1966 General Motors Electrovan that we borrowed from the General Motors corporate collection in Detroit. There's nobody going to drive by who's not going to know that we're here. If people don't know you're here, you might, you might as well not be. We want, to, we want to make it very clear that we're here, we're open for business, people are welcome to come in and see what gets us so excited. Fortune magazine calls the newly renovated Peterson Museum the ultimate man cave. For tickets and more information, visit www.peterson.org. Reporting from LA's Miracle Mile, I'm Jason Rusidlo. Well, that's it for us. If you missed any part of our show, go to our website, CaliforniaLifeHD.com. We'll see you next time. Or watch us on our YouTube channel. Stay connected to our social media, like our blogs on Facebook, follow our tweets on Twitter, and check out our posts on Instagram and Pinterest, where we bring you the best of California.